Alright YouTube, hello. We're on to video number three, assembling the Raspberry Pi Bitcoin Miner and the Ubuntu install. In this video, we assemble the Raspberry Pi Bitcoin Miner and install the operating system. So, unbox your Argon 1 case as well as your M.2 SSD drive. Uh, if you haven't watched the first or second video yet, what you don't know is the reason we need a minimum of 500 gigs of storage and preferably one terabyte of storage is that we're going to host our own wallet and blockchain as opposed to relying on some unknown third party uh, to host those for us. So the blockchain today is about, I believe, 330 gigabytes and growing. So let's get started. Uh, we're going to need the lower half of the Argon case that holds the SSD drive to start. And if you went out and purchased a micro SD card, don't open it yet, uh, as we might not be needing that, depending on which firmware is installed on the Pi, as discussed in the previous video. If you recall from previous videos, uh, modern firmware on the Raspberry Pi will allow for boot from USB, which is what we need. This modernized firmware is a relatively new development for the Raspberry Pi, so it is possible that you will need the micro SD card to do your first boot. Then after that you update the firmware, and then after that you no longer need the micro SD card afterward. So uh, remove that tiny screw on the bottom half of the uh, Argon case for where the SSD uh, hard drive is going to go. Uh, gently install your M.2 SSD drive into the lower half of the Argon 1 case, and then use that small screw to gently tighten the SSD drive in place. doesn't require a whole lot of tightness. Uh, next, you will need an imaging program to set up the uh, operating system onto your SSD drive. So from your regular Windows computer or whatever you have, uh, go to raspberrypi.org slash software and go ahead and download the imager software and install that onto your computer. After the installation, it's time to connect uh, the SSD drive to your computer via USB cable. So you're either going to need a male A to male A USB cable to connect, and this is also known as a USB extension cable, or a male A to female USB cable, which is also known as an extension cable. If you're using the male to female extension cable, you will then plug the connector plug that came with the argon case into the female end of the extension cable, essentially converting it to a male-to-male -male cable. Um, a quick check of Walmart does show that these extension cables are in stock right now, right at the store, so you don't even have to order it online at Amazon. You can just run up to Walmart and grab one if you don't have one. After the USB cable is plugged into the USB drive and uh, your computer, start up the Raspberry Pi Imager program. Choose the operating system button. And then from the menu, choose Other General Purpose Operating System. Then Ubuntu, and then one of the 64-bit operating systems. You're going to want 64-bit uh, because if you have, especially if you have the 8-gig uh, Pi, 32-bit um, operating systems can only address uh, 4 gigs of memory. So if you have the 8-gig uh, Pi, you're going to want the 64-bit operating system. Otherwise, you're just you're wasting RAM. Um, I will not be installing any of the graphical desktop environments. Um, I go pure command line, and these videos will reflect that. I recommend you do the same. If you're not any kind of Linux expert, don't worry. I'll show you all the steps in the videos. I chose Ubuntu Server 21.04 64-bit. And after choosing the operating system, click the button to choose your storage. You should see your M.2 SSD drive in there. And then next, click the Write button. And once you click the Write button, it'll download it and write it basically all in one step. So you don't have to give it a few minutes. Now that this step is complete, it's time to finish the assembly of the Pi into the Argon case. Follow the instructions that come with the case, or alternatively, there are videos on YouTube that show the assembly. You can also decide at this point whether or not you want the Pi to auto power on in the event of a power outage by placing the jumper block on the appropriate pins. I recommend this. I would hold off on tightening the case screws though for right now as the case may need to come apart a few times uh, depending on the firmware version and any need to insert uh, the micro SD card. So 
hold off on tightening everything up for right now. So now it's time to fire up the Raspberry Pi. Get your monitor plugged into an HDMI port. Uh, make sure the bottom and top half of the Aragon case are connected with the USB plug. Plug in your keyboard. Uh, no mouse is required if um, we're doing the uh, command line only. And then plug in an Ethernet cable to your router or your switch. So although the Raspberry Pi does have Wi-Fi, it is not turned on at first. So you'll definitely still be needing uh, an Ethernet cable at least uh, to begin. Plug in the power cord and it will turn on by itself or if you may have to press the power button. It just depends on what jumper pin you, option you selected. And at this point, you really should be looking at one of three things. Either number one, Ubuntu booted right up without any issues and you're at the login prompt. Congratulations. If uh, this is you, you can skip the remainder of this video and go on to the next. Uh, number two, uh, you could be seeing a Raspberry Pi bio screen saying it cannot find the hard drive. And if this is the case, you likely will need the Pi firmware upgrade. So for now, Repeat the same imaging steps we just did, but this time do it with the micro SD card and uh, choose the Raspberry Pi OS 32 bit instead of Ubuntu. You will need the micro SD card reader uh, to put that little SD card into so it can be plugged into your computer's USB port. After the imaging, unplug the power from the case, unplug the USB adapter that joins the uh, Argon case apps together, and insert the micro SD card. Now reboot, and hopefully at this point you have booted into Raspi uh, Raspbian OS. Now we're going to flash the BIOS. So let me run through the steps on how to update your Raspberry Pi firmware, just in case you fall into this category that it will not boot your uh, SSD drive because it can't boot from USB. And I'll just quickly apologize to everybody, I'm by no means any kind of video expert here. Uh, this is probably about as good as it gets for me. So. The Raspberry Pi has a default username of Pi and a default password of Raspberry. And after logging in, first thing we're going to need to do is put all the updates on this uh, because the firmware is kind of part of the update process itself. So I have the commands typed already out for you in the uh, notepad window above so you can see what I'm typing a little easier. And this will probably take some time. Alright, it's finished uh, doing its updates, so now we're going to give it a reboot. And uh, that's going to be sudo reboot. Log back in. And I'm going to run that command just one more time to make sure that I in fact did get all the updates. And it does look like I got them all. Alright, so on to the next step. Next command sudo rpi-eeprom-update and if you look here it is telling me that the current the current release is uh, September 3rd of 2020 and the latest release is April 29th of 2021 so an update is definitely needed here and I'm going to repeat the same command, except this time I'm going to use the dash A switch, and this will actually do the firmware update. So the FROM update is pending. Please reboot to apply the update. So I'm going to repeat this step again. sudo reboot. 
All right, after a reboot, let's log in again. All right, I'm going to check my work here just to make sure. sudo rpi from update about the switch. And as you can see, it has now the latest firmware. So at this point, I'm going to shut down a little bit different command here. sudo shutdown dash h now. This will actually halt the operating system so you can uh, safely unplug the Raspberry Pi. So at this point, remove your micro SS, micro uh, SD card. Let's plug in your uh, SSD drive via the USB and power up and test, and hopefully you're in business here. Now I do have a note here real quick. Um, this next step here, if this doesn't work for you, you can try this next step, and it's uh, similar to what we've just been doing. And that's going to be uh, Vi, which is a uh, editor. You're going to edit the file inside of the folder etc slash default. The name of the file is rpi-eeprom-update. This file may or may not be in there, it, or it should be in there, I, uh, I should say. And um, you're going to look for the word uh, default and change that to stable. Then run the uh, EPROM update again with the dash A switch, sudo rpi dash EPROM dash update dash A, sudo reboot, log in, uh, and then uh, run through an actual shutdown again, sudo shutdown dash H now enter, and uh, then try again um, your SSD hard drive with uh, the USB, and that should work for you. And then, of course, the third option uh, that could have happened after you booted up the Raspberry Pi is you could be looking at a blank screen, or your screen might be complaining about resolution being too high. And this kind of threw me for a loop the first time that I saw this. Uh, I, what I didn't realize is that my Pi actually did boot up the Ubuntu server, but my monitor was older and it would not display the higher resolution. So it took me a little while to figure out that the issue was the display and, and in fact that the operating system actually did boot up. I just didn't know it. So if this is the case for you, you will have to SSH into your Pi uh, from your computer. Um, I use uh, my Windows computer, I use a program called Putty to uh, SSH in and get a command prompt and uh, you can do the same. You'll need to find your Raspberry Pi's IP address, and the way you're going to do that is to log into your Wi-Fi router or your regular router, whatever you're using, and you need to find what IP address your router's DHCP server assigned to the Pi. And you'll, every router is different. You're going to have to look around in there to find uh, DHCP, and then you'll you'll find the uh, Pi. Uh, so I don't know what it's named, but you'll find something basically that says Pi and uh, find out what that IP address is. So once you have the IP address, you can SSH in now and uh, make the following changes so your monitor will work. We're going to edit or create a config.txt file in the slash boot slash firmware folder. Now, if you're not using Ubuntu version 21.04, the location of this file will be different as they changed it in version 21. It'll probably have to Google to find out where the config.txt file should be placed just depending on what version of Ubuntu you're using. So now watch as we make the needed changes that will force resolution to a lower resolution mode that an older monitor can handle. So this is probably mostly just going to be a lesson on how to use Linux really at the command line for a lot of you. Um, it's a fairly straightforward uh, change we're going to make here. Uh, so the first thing we have to do is go to the location uh, that has the file that we need to edit. And I'm already in that uh, location right now, slash boot slash firmware, but for those who might not know, uh, the command is cd, which stands for change directory, slash boot, slash firmware. Enter. So we are in the directory. ls basically shows us the directory contents, and I'm just going to scroll up here and you'll see that config.txt is already in there, config.txt, but we'll run through the edit process just so you can see. So 
we're going to uh, the name of the editor we're going to use is Vi. That's my editor of choice. There's plenty of editors out there if this one doesn't suit you. And we're going to first type in sudo. And you might be wondering what all this sudo business is that we've been typing in. And when you're logged in as just a regular user and you're not logged in as root, which is the super user or the administrator, if you will, uh, you don't have access to all the commands on purpose. And what you have to do to use the higher level commands is to use sudo if you're not logged in as root. And sudo temporarily elevates you to the root status or the administrator status just for that command. So sudo then by which is the name of the editor and the name of the file config.txt hit enter and a lot of times you're not seeing it now but when you use the command sudo it'll ask you for the root user's uh, password or the administrator's password in order to do that you didn't see that here because it's already been typed in once before so you can kind of already see uh, down here at the bottom, these changes are already um, placed into this file. And I'm just going to give you a quick tutor here on how to use Vi. Um, you, you can see the commands are typed in there for yourself, and that, that's pretty much what you have to add in there. But the way you do it in Vi, uh, if you want to type something into this, first you have to hit the insert button on your keyboard. So which I just did, that puts you into insert mode. Now you can add spaces, you can delete spaces, you can you can type. Um, so you're in basically the editor mode when you push the insert button. To get out of the insert uh, mode, you hit escape. And you'd have to do that in order to save the file, which I'll show you in just one second. But let me hit insert again. Go back to uh, what I just typed in there, that garbage. I'm just going to delete it out of there. Hit escape to get out of insert mode. Now to save this file, uh, I'm going to hold the shift button down in the colon, and you can see the colon down there, and I have a couple of options here. If I say just W, that means write, that will save the file. If I say WQ, that will write the file and also exit out. If I just say Q exclamation, that will uh, exit out of the file without saving it. So again, it's already saved, but I'll just show you. I hit the uh, shift colon, W, enter, is saved. Shift colon, W, Q, right, and exit. And that's really it. Uh, on your next reboot, hopefully your monitor is working. You're booting into a lower resolution for your older monitor. Once you've done this, go ahead and reboot and see if your changes are working on your monitor. So at this point, this will conclude video number three, and uh, in the video number four, we begin to do some configurations in Ubuntu and uh, start getting the uh, blockchain downloading. That's all for now.